wow, you know, there's sometimes when you just wake up and the Holy Spirit is just giving you this download of what to look up and what to put together. And it's so incredible. I have something that just gave me the chills. And I want to share this and show you some connections that it just really gave me the chills. Now I'm gonna share some things and show you something that just is so stunning. And I'm gonna start in the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And this starts in chapter one, and then I'm going to pause to show you some things that it'll, it's gonna blow your mind, that's all I can say. Listen to this. The revelation of Jesus the Messiah, or Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus the Messiah, Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now this is Asia Minor. Grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come. That means he's in the past, the present, and the future. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus the Messiah who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I'm going to stop right there. Remember, I've been talking about the Scarlet Harlot, the woman who rides the Scarlet Color Beast in the wilderness, and then the harlot was brought before Jesus in the temple by the Sadducees and Pharisees, and they tried to have her condemned and stoned to death. But the truth of that whole story is that their ancestors had played the Scarlet Harlot against him and they came to test him to see what he would do. Well, he wrote them a love message instead of condemning them. But the older ones walked away first because they knew about their ancestors and what they had done. So we're told numerous times in scriptures that though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And we know that our sins have been purified like snow through Yeshua's blood. So think about this incredible connection. In the situation with the so-called Star of Jacob that's going to explode, which is called uh, T. CRB, which is Corona Borealis. Now, I just want to point out something extraordinary, and that is that in the Nova that's going to explode, the so-called Star of Jacob that the Jews are saying is the Star of Jacob, and we're seeing an explosion that happened because it's, you know, 2,000 to 3,000 light years away, so we're seeing an explosion that may have happened 2,000 years ago when it happens. Think about this. This just shocks me so incredibly. And remember, the scapegoat was sent out into the wilderness and he had the red cord that was supposed to turn white by um, the miracle of God when their sins were forgiven. So what do we have with this star of Jacob, it's just incredible. It is a red or scarlet colored giant star in orbit with a white 
dwarf star. And when they spin around each other in orbit, there's all of these gases that collide and everything. And then there is a nova, an explosion that happens. And it's called the blaze star, which of course is a hot burning fire. And we are purified by the Holy Spirit in the flaming tongues of fire of the Holy Spirit that rested on the disciples and rests and dwells in us when we have received the King of Kings, the King of Glory in our hearts and partake of his living testimony so that we can live forever. So that is the eternal extra virgin olive oil that we're supposed to have in our lamps that's burning. Now, please watch the previous videos that go into explanations about Elul 25 and everything that I showed there. But you've got a red giant with a white dwarf star. The red giant represents the blood and represents the blood that's covering the sins that are like scarlet and they become white as snow, like the white dwarf star. And of course, in a nova, the star explodes, but it still exists. And it struck me that it explodes once every 80 years. So it's considered to be a once in a lifetime event for you to be able to see. And that is a generation. So it's like the Lord presents this in the sky for his glory to remind everybody that his blood covenant has purified our sins that were like scarlet and now they're white as snow. So the explosion happens once every 80 years in a generation so that generation can see it in the sky and testify of the Lord's glory. So now there's more. This is going to really blow you away. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So he was in the past, he is now, and he's eternally. He's coming again. And from Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now this just blows me away. I want you to pay attention to these words. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, that's Aleph and Tav, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty, the Eternal. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Before I go on, I want to go back to 1 Thessalonians 16, which we all know so well, but I'm just connecting these things together. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
So Revelation chapter 1, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. And verse 10 says, And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. That's in Revelation chapter 1. But that's not all. So those are all connecting to the revelation of the Messiah when he's revealed. And he's revealed, he's coming with the clouds. And there's a voice as of a trumpet. So listen to what the Lord is telling us in 1 Corinthians 15. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. And then it talks about, as we have be borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Okay, so he says, the first man is of earth earthy. The second man, which is the Messiah, is the Lord from heaven. So he's talking about the celestial bodies here. And then he says, as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And this is where he says, behold, I show you a mystery. Just after he's talking about celestial bodies. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And when this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus the Messiah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we're told about the celestial bodies right before it talks about the resurrection of the dead. And then it goes on saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. That's because he's purified us with his own blood. So we're no longer scarlet. We've been made white as snow, just, just like the Nova depicts in the giant red star and the white dwarf star that collide and explode. And it's a star that doesn't die. It just keeps on showing the testimony of the Lord every 80 years, every generation for thousands of years. So the Lord is definitely seen in his creation and his testimony is obvious. <clears throat> his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, 
and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. So John is writing in Revelation about the past, present, and future. And the problem that people are having understanding it is they're only looking at Revelation as a future event. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Well, this is, I mean, this totally gave me the chills. The Corona Borealis, and it's made up of seven stars. And there's one that's in their midst that will be the Nova that explodes and burns millions of times brighter than the sun. And not only that, Nova means new. So the red giant and the white dwarf star that represent his testimony in his blood, purifying as white as snow, testify to the crown, which is the word corona by definition. And of course the Messiah wears many crowns. But this Nova means new, and he, through his blood covenant with many that washed away their sins and made them white as snow, gives us the new covenant of the heart, which is the word Nova. So angels are depicted in the Bible sometimes as stars. And there's seven stars that make up the crown of the Corona Borealis, where the Nova is going to explode in the midst, amongst them. This is so astonishing. <clears throat> Remember what it said here. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. Well, the Messiah is at the right hand. He is the right hand of the throne of God. Because he's the ruling arm. He's the king, which is the head of state. And that's why he's the head over us, because he's the king of kings, and we are the body that makes up his heavenly temple. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So we've got the seven stars in the corona crown, where the supposed star of Jacob is going to explode, making it brighter in the sky than you could imagine. But it's, you know, thousands of light years away. So we will see an explosion that actually took place probably 2,000 something years ago. We may be seeing the very explosion that happened, you know, back when Jesus was born. I do not know for sure, but I do know one thing. I talked about the star of Bethlehem and how it was not just a star that it was the Shekinah glory of God, and it came and stood over the place where the child lay. So it was not just something up in the sky. But the heavens declare the glory of God. So his testimony is actually seen in the heavenly hosts. So that's why, you know, the constellations that they've been altered to mean all of these things in mythology when in reality they truly declare God's glory. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And John had him say that he comes with clouds and he heard a great voice as of a trumpet. So now I'm just gonna show you a couple of pictures of the Corona Borealis. And incidentally, there are 
seven lamps sitting on a lampstand in the menorah. And those lamps have wicks from soiled clothes that the priest wore and they would tear them into strips and stick them in the pure extra virgin olive oil and the wicks would soak up this oil and it would you know purify them when they they were lit on fire and they would illuminate the whole room in the temple and the menorah was never supposed to go out but of course the lamps went out as soon as the Messiah died and they could not light it. So the five foolish virgins had their lights going out while those who accepted the King of Kings and glory, their lamps and lights are still burning because we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us through the gospel message, which is the good news of the Messiah, Jesus, and he's the King of Kings. That just blew me away that the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches and the seven stars are in the corona and the one that explodes that's in the midst of them is like the jewel in the crown of the king which is the messiah himself. And we were told about the heavenly bodies and the celestial and the terrestrial right before it talks about in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump, that the dead would rise first. And then the believers that are alive and remain would be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And those that are dead in their graves that hear his voice will come up out of their graves because they know his voice. It's so incredible to see that the angels of the seven churches are represented in this corona borealis with the seven stars. Is this talking and giving a message to the church as well as the fact that a crown is going to be given to a fake king by the Sanhedrin because they refuse the king of glory? And they will have they will try to implement the law and put burdens on people that the Messiah took off that yoke so that we could be free. The Jerusalem above is free, but the one down here is still in bondage with her children, according to Galatians. I think it's Galatians 3, which I quoted before. I just find it stunning that this is the revelation of Jesus, and in that very first chapter, not the fourth chapter, we're talking about the very first chapter. He's talking about that he's coming in the clouds and that there's a great voice that sounded like a trumpet. And he also talked about in verse 5 of Revelation 1, from Jesus the Messiah, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. You know, are all these signs to us that he is really and truly on his way? And the church has the seven stars that are the angels of the churches. And it's a crown, meaning while the Sanhedrin's looking to put a usurper king on their throne, we've already accepted the king, so the crown can represent both. It can represent the foolish virgins that will crown. He's an existing king, but they will gift him a crown. And he's not the true heir. But the Messiah that comes down from heaven with the voice of a trumpet in the clouds. He's the one we've accepted and we're going up. And this is truly another incredible sign that we are close at hand because these connections 
are unbelievable. You must have the chills. As soon as I saw that sentence, and I mean, I've read these scriptures thousands and thousands of times over the years, but to actually connect it to a celestial body that testifies of his eternal covenant is incredible. How do you like this cool revelation? <laughs> I'm totally shocked and excited. Well, I'll see you in the next video. I just wanted to give you something truly stunning to think about. This is when the Messiah is revealed, when we will see him in the cloud with the voice, with the trumpet. Revelation 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. His glorious appearing for those who eagerly await him. He shall appear a second time without sin for salvation to take us to the place he's prepared for us. If you're not excited by now, you better be. Surely the heavens declare the glory of God and that he created it all. And he lets every generation witness it. Keep your eyes on the prize. I truly believe that that's correct, that he is the treasure in the field, that king is in the field that appears suddenly to his subjects, and those that have prepared in the whole month of Elul right now, trimming their wicks, can see the days approaching, getting ready to meet the bridegroom. They will go through the door when he opens it, which the door of heaven is considered opened at Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. Woohoo! It's truly marvelous, don't you think? But to see that the crown has the exploding nova that burns millions of times brighter all of a sudden, and that star doesn't die, it continues on. Wow, it's like the eternal life that he brought to us through his blood covenant with many, to purify them white as snow from their sins. And he is the eternal light, the, the blaze star that burns within us through his Holy Spirit. Totally cool. Woohoo! In such glorious revelations. Shalom for now. God bless everybody. I hope this excites you, especially about the angels being stars. And there are seven of them in the crown of the Corona Borealis. It's a signal to the church that their king is also coming. Not just the star of Jacob's trouble that's coming because they reject the king of kings and will choose another king for themselves. As I proved in the scriptures. You know, I try so hard to bring you the best and most astonishing truths. All right, we'll see you all later. All right, good night. I'll see you in the next episode. Shalom.